Well, hello, how are you? Welcome to Fresh Oil Today TV. My name is Karen Regal and I'm just glad to be here with you. I have a short word today I want to share. I just want to encourage so many of you as well as myself and those within my home. You know, the Father is truly moving in our day and, and we know that. The, the Spirit of the Lord is really moving those who are seeking Him into truth. And we just, you know, I, I just thank Father for, for His truth. I thank Him for His way of leading us into His truth. This is a, a wonderful time. And, and as I said, the word today is going to be a brief word of encouragement. I know that there are many, including myself and those within my own home, we're in situations where as we just need not be discouraged. We just need to hold on. And, and, and it's not even about holding on. Do you remember that little, uh, there was a poster some years ago where a kitten was holding on to a branch and, uh, and, and it had a, a saying, it was like, hang in there. Well, we, we can do much better than just hang in there. That is not the concept of going on and trusting and having faith in the Father. So uh, if you could turn that down just a little bit, that would be good. So I'm going, to, I'm going to share some scripture with you here tonight that I hope will bring encouragement to you, more than just hanging in there, okay? Father, we just thank you for your presence. I ask, Father, that you would anoint these words and, and let your anointing, your impartation of faith be present for all of us today. I, I ask that the Holy Spirit, your precious Holy Spirit, would come and would teach us and would give illumination and impartation only from your Holy Spirit, that which is from your heart, cause us to hear, cause us to see, cause us to understand and receive all that you are desiring to impart into us through this word. We thank you in the name of your Son, we ask. Yeshua, our Savior, our Messiah. Amen. All right, tonight, if you have your Bible, let us turn to Hebrews 12.1. Let's turn there. Hebrews 12.1. I do have mine printed out, but I'm just going to turn there for the sake of, of turning. And Hebrews 12, 1 reads, the translation that I have here is, Therefore, seeing we also are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily ensnare us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Going on to verse 2, looking unto Yahushua, Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne. Uh, now, these are powerful scriptures, powerful words, all of the words are powerful, but I, I find it fitting today for so many situations and circumstances that we as, as believers, that, that we're walking through in our personal life, in our social arena, in every arena that we touch in this life. We need to be encouraged, and the Father wants to do that. But these are words that we're going to just work through these scriptures. But before I go any further, I want to read Luke 9, 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62, and it reads this. And Yahushua said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh, the kingdom of God. Now, 
that is very, very important because I, I want us to see that in that scripture here in Luke, what I just read, that we're in a time now where we, we need to press. We need to press into uh, Yahushua as never, never before. We need to really press into the spirit realm, into the, into the real, the eternal realm. We have eternal now because we are believers saved by his blood redeemed by his blood but we need to press into the reality of that the experiential reality of daily living and walking in that reality and there are certain things that hinder us one thing uh, when when Yahushua was said about uh, you put your hands to the plow and you look back that you're not fit well that looking back is like you're looking in front of yourself, and you've got that plow, and you're plowing. It's hard going at times. But to look back means sometimes a longing that there's something in the back, in the past, that we have not released. That there's something we're still trying to, to drag with us or bring with us or a, a bit of regret, or unsurety, or doubt, or unbelief, even. And we want to put our hands to the plow and go forward. Now, just consider the past glories of man and his civilization. How they have all crumbled. Time has moved on. Not one thing of this world is eternal. We ourselves are witnesses to this truth. Many of us have witnessed the last, uh, uh, the, the last few changes within the past few decades. It has been just tremendous changes. We've seen kingdoms fall. We've seen nations birth. We've, we've seen uh, 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 just a tremendous change globally in the society of man. We are put to the test of even the slightest meaning of even our language. What means this? You have a word and it might mean this today, tomorrow. It may very well mean something else. Time is moving swiftly. And who has not felt the pressure of the world to move with it? There is a pressure in the world to move with the time. Get with it. Oh, that's old fashioned. We don't do that anymore. You're behind time. Move on with the world. We have all felt it. I know you have. I have. Speaking of those who seek a, 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 a more simple way of life, speaking of those, there, there are those of us who, who, who want a more simpler way of life, but the world challenges that. There are those within this, this realm who we, we don't care. We don't live our lives for the big house. We don't care for the, for the, for the ultimate muscle car, the new foreign car, or, or swiftest new model. We, we don't live to wear uh, designer tags and handbags. There are those of us who desire a more simpler way of life. We are not desiring to be entangled with the world's must-have items. Amen? Amen? And what have you. This pressure has been reached and it has entered even into the doctrine of the church. Many are now compromising their beliefs and doctrines of Yeshua, and also this pressure is revealing what is really in their hearts. Pressure has a way of doing that. When pressure is applied, it will reveal what is in your heart. I mean, you know, uh, can we not just simply stand for what we believe are, are, are we allowing the, the, the pressures of the world, society around us, to cause us to compromise what it is we believe? Can we stand in peace believing what we believe in love, displaying love, without being judgmental, harsh, damning people who cannot see what we see? You see, with, with all of these things that are going on in the world, we don't have to compromise. But we have to come into a place 
where, where, where there is real love and concern for our neighbor, for those around us, regardless of what they believe, regardless of their lifestyle, regardless. We have to, to walk in love, not judgment, not harshness, not hate, but love, but God's love, Yeshua's love, not man's idea of love. Take your eyes off of this world with its fears, its insecurities, its deception and false illusions. It promises to give what is not in its power to give. And that's what the world does. The world promises you things, peace, love, joy, happiness, love, you know, all of these things. But the world cannot give you those things. Therefore, take your eyes off those things and begin looking unto Jesus, Yeshua the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. You see, if you forget that you're in a race, you will stop running. And I think that is the danger that all believers, we forget. We're in the danger of forgetting that we are in a race and, and we get comfortable. We begin to slumber. We begin to sleep. But if we do, we will lose. If you forget that the way to run this race is with patience, you will lose. Patience. The writer here in Hebrew says it's with patience that we run this race. And by patience, this is what I mean. This is a definition I want to share with you. Patience. The suffering of affliction, pain, toil, calamity, provocation, or other evil with a calm, unruffled temper. Endurance without murmuring or fretfulness. Patience may spring from constitutional fortitude, from a kind of heroic pride, or from Christian submission to the divine will. And that is, my friend, the patience that we are to run this race with, complete submission to the perfect will of Yahushua. That is the patience. And with that, we ought to have a calm temper which bears evil without murmuring or discontent. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. Another thing about being patient is that it's the act or quality of waiting long for justice or expected good without discontent. Have patience with me, and I will pay the all in Matthew 18. Patience is also perseverance, being constant in your labor and exertion. It says about you, know, you should wait. He learned with patience and with meekness. It is also the quality of bearing offense and injuries without anger or revenge. This running is with patience. Believer, we will have to suffer some in this world, but we are not the only ones. There are untold thousands who have gone on before us, having suffered, and they are the cloud of witnesses. The word witness means martyr. Did we read that about the cloud of witnesses? Yes, we did. That's Hebrews 12, 1, what we just read. Therefore, seeing we are also are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, so great a cloud of martyrs. Isn't that awesome? Untold numbers. Those who have given, laid down their lives as they too were led by the cloud of his presence, leading them as they follow him, Yahushua. 
Remember the cloud of his presence, of his presence, excuse me, in Exodus 13, 21 and 22. Remember the children of Israel, follow the cloud by day and the fire, cloud of fire by night, pillar of fire, cloud in the day. And they followed him, that was his presence. So he is leading us on now to follow him. Remember, the cloud of his presence. We follow Yahweh, as do the witnesses, the martyrs who surround us, encouraging us on in the unseen realm. That cloud is the very presence of Yahweh himself. He said he would lead us by his spirit. Also, he talks about those besetting sins. There are besetting sins that chain us, such as weights, burdens, impediments. You know what they are. You know what they are. You know what besetting sins. You know what hinders you. And many times when I've seen people struggle with the besetting sin, whether it's a habit or something they continue to struggle with, at some point you have to say, well, either the word of of, of Yahweh is true or not. Either the blood of Yahushua has set you free or not. And it boils down to your will, your choice, your decision. I was in a prayer meeting some years ago, and my first experience literally with this was that I was in, you know, everybody was praying, nobody was focusing on anyone, everybody was pressing in to the Father. And as I was sitting, as I like to say, in my tent, and I was sitting there and I was praying, and I, I, I had this beautiful experience of being lifted. And as I was being lifted, all of a sudden I, I got so far and I could literally feel a yank. It was like, you know, like I was, there was a rope or a chain. And when I had come to the end of that chain wherever it was anchored I couldn't go any further and there I was couldn't go any further and that experience was so real at that right moment at that moment I didn't wait later on to discuss it or talk about it I began to cry out and ask father what is holding me that I cannot enter it that I cannot go further that I cannot come higher. What is the hindrance in my life? And that is the same for you, dear. You, you have to begin to ask the Father, what is the hindrance? You might not even know of anything you're struggling with, really, you know. But, but there are things that he wants to deliver us from, to cleanse us, to purify us, to... to uh, their works of holiness and sanctification in our lives and our surroundings, things that he wants to do that we are not aware. And it's not by works. No, this is a spiritual transaction. It says also that sin here are those things that you are entangled in and prevent prevent you from running. When you you ever got your feet entangled in something. And you couldn't run. How about if you've ever did the other uh, races, the sack races, and you had the sack, you know, you're running and you're jumping in the sack. But if you ever get tangled up in that sack or, or just lose your momentum, you cannot hop, you can't run, you just fall, topple right over. You know, there are many false beliefs that may sting from, from doctrinal teachings of man. See, it doesn't necessarily have to be sin as you're going out sinning in your flesh or, or, or even in your thought it could be your belief system could be you could be trying to instead of walking in the life of the word you're walking in the doctrine of man the doctrine and the belief of, of your organization he wants to free us from organizational and doctrines of men belief all of such now, now, you imagine someone who's bound in that legalism, doctrine of man, and you combine that with the battle to overcome the sin nature that is inherited in every man. That can be real heavy. 
and come and also put on top of that the pressure all around them. This will hinder you from running your race. When he says that we are to look away, means looking in a focused direction. When he says to uh, to look away, looking unto Jesus, look away unto Jesus. Some translations say that was one I was reading earlier. Earlier, when when we are to look unto Him, it means to to look in a focused direction. And I love the teaching about doves' eyes. Doves, as as I've been told, and I have researched it, and it is true, they have dove eyes. And and when a dove mates, they're mated for life. And they have only eyes. Their eyes are only for their mate. They don't look all around and everything. They look straight and they're focused. Dove's eyes. You must look away from all in your environment, all in old religion, all earthly things, that you may look unto Yahushua. You've got to look away from those things that you may look unto him. He is the one who draws us to him. Our part is we have to look. Your will, your heart setting, the setting of your heart, the setting of your will will cause you to look. Yahushua, he is the originator of our faith, the inaugurator, the leader the pioneer, the forerunner. Abraham is called the father of faith, but Yahushua is the author of our faith. Jesus is the author. We receive this faith from Yahweh. There is no other way to come in to this faith. Let's turn quickly here to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1.1. Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1. Peter, an apostle to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galicia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethania. Okay, Second Peter, sorry, I'm in First Peter. Forgive me that error. <laughs> I kept reading, I was like, well, I'm, I'm started. I might as well keep reading. Here we are, Second Peter, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Yeshua. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of Yahweh and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. When we look into Yahushua as the life-giving spirit, we receive faith from him. It says we obtain like precious faith with, with us through the righteousness of Yahweh and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. So we obtain this precious faith. This is how we obtain it. Also, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15.45. 1 Corinthians 15.45. 1 Corinthians 15.45 reads like this. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, referring to Yahushua, was made a quickening spirit. So we receive the life-giving spirit. We receive the faith. We receive from Jesus, Yahushua. He gives us of himself. It's like a transfusion. And then a, simple, a supernatural believing arises within us. And something just supernaturally happens. We have this faith. I can't write a recipe for it. I can't write a formula for it. I just know that it is in him and it is through him that we receive this faith. To run this race according to his way. It says... This kind of faith causes us to believe in him. This faith is not of ourselves, 
but it is of him. He imparts this faith to us. Thereby, we now live by him. Live by him. In this day, in this age, we need to live by him. Be encouraged. I hope this has helped you on your way. Pray, cultivate your devotional life, your time in your prayer closet. Cultivate that time. When you read your Bible, read your Bible prayerfully. Not for information, not for content, not religiously. I gotta read my, my five or three or four scriptures today. Let me read my scriptures. You're not eating. We have to learn to eat the word, to linger over the word. Every word, every word, every word, every word. Linger over it and allow his precious Holy Spirit to illuminate his word to you. Make it living. I love you and I hope this has helped you. And we'll see you next week, I pray, around the same time. I know I'm sometimes I'm not consistent, but we're getting there. I've been such a butterfly, but the Father's doing the work of discipline in me. Okay, I love you, and be blessed. Next week. <laughs>